Hello everyone, my name is Miles, and today I'm going to be looking at a free-to-play game called Grand Fantasia that I'm going to be doing a Let's Play on. This game has been around for a few years now, and I played it when it first came out, but I didn't really play it all that much. So I decided to make a new account and just kind of go for it. It has a sort of stereotypical anime style that a lot of free-to-play games have, really. And I'm not really fond of that bit, but it had a really good quality to it in a lot of other aspects. But let's get started. Um, at level 1, you start as a novice, and you don't actually get to pick your class until level 5. But the classes break up into a necromancer, a wizard, a sage, a cleric, an assassin, a ranger, a paladin, and a berserker. You don't actually get to play these more specific classes until you reach level 30, but my goal in this series thus far, I haven't decided how far I'm really going to go, but I want to become a paladin. As I mentioned in my previous videos, tanking is something that just has come naturally to me, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Because before when I played the game, I was a ranger, I think. I don't even know that I made it to 30, to be entirely honest. but. I'm going to go ahead and make my character, and start going through the tutorial. As you can see, the character customization isn't all that fantastic, but you do have some options. Let's see. Go with that one. Red. There we go. One of the different selling points to this game was this little guy here. When you first make your character, you create a sprite. You keep that sprite throughout the whole game, and it acts as sort of your guide and your partner in a few ways. For example, if you pull it out when you're killing things, it'll loot for you. And it's also how you craft and gather in this game. As you can see, when you make your beginning sprite, you pick what professions you want it to have. So I'm going to go with having the ability to make warrior armor. Now, what do I want him to look like? Alrighty. So when you pop into the game, you instantly get a quest, and you also get the option to join a guild. If your guild gets large enough, you can be put on this list, and people can join your guild from essentially any spot in the world, from what I understand. But... I'm not going to worry about that right now. To be entirely honest, I'll probably make one later. But let's just sort of hop into it. First quest is to... Talk to the guy I'm talking to. Ah, there we go. Defeat Jelly Rabbits. I get gloves out of it. Set up my hotbar real quick. There we go. As a novice, you start out with these two skills. One that's just a strike, and then the other one... If you're fighting something that's under level 10, you can hit it and every mob will just ignore your existence. So if you start to die in the beginning, you can just be like, hey, leave me alone, and they will. Which I thought was pretty cool. Nope. Spazzy camera. As you can see, these things die pretty easy. And unlike in other games, you don't loot the body, they drop things. And if it's a quest item, the little bag will be blue. And here's my sprite. You can carry three of them at any time, but you'll always keep your one that you made with your character. And the other ones won't level up with you, like your beginning one will. I'm going to go ahead and pull him out, show you what that's like. If I can manage to hit the button. There we go. See? 
He just kind of follows you around and loots for you. Which, I will admit, is a lot more useful on a character that you just range than a melee one. But if you really want to be lazy, then you can just have him do it. Ah, actually, I seem to be mistaken. This strike here isn't the just hit that everybody gets. It's a accuracy decrease. Sort of like a sand attack, if you were to compare it to Pokemon. And I leveled up. Previously, when I played the game, if there was an important quest, sometimes they would pop up, but now if there's any quest that they deem important at all at the beginning, you see it over here as a little book, and you can either click on it or it'll automatically pop up. Which is good, because the game needed a little bit more direction. You spent a lot of time trying to figure out what you were supposed to do instead of it sort of showing you. But I guess some people might like that. Alright, quest complete. Pants. Yeah. Alright, I gotta report to some guy. Go ahead and put these on. Oh, and with your sprite, you can give them items, essentially. Like this is a work table. And your sprite needs that to well you can't I can't put it on him right now because he's out, so I'll have to put him away. But he needs the work table to create things, for example. And... Fuck. I'm playing in windowed mode right now, and for some reason when you play in windowed mode it doesn't... it doesn't sync up properly, and you'll click something and you'll actually need to click, like, a quarter of an inch lower. I don't really understand why, but... Anyway. If you equip things to him, for example, right now, your sprite's just like a bobbing head, but eventually, after you hit level 21, they evolve and get like a body. And then, the further you get into the game, the more additions they get. Like, when they are fully evolved, they have wings and stuff. But, you can give them stuff for their house, and little cards that, when they're out following you, will give you bonuses, like extra evasion or extra defense. Oh, I walked clean past someone I need to turn a quest into. On the mini-map, any quest that you have to turn in is a little money bag, and any quest that you can pick up is a book. More stuff for my sprite. Did I level up again? Huh. Mm, mining practice. You get to pick which quest you pick up because not all sprites have the same skills, obviously. So I picked the one to have my sprite practice mining. So I'm going to go have him do that. If you want to have them collect something, you just hit the collect button and pick the skill that you want them to use, and then you have various tiers that you unlock as their skills get higher. As you can see, you can see what their stats are right here. And their stamina, and their relationship towards you, and here's their mood, and if their stamina or their mood is too low, you can't have them go do something, which is kind of annoying, but you can go buy things to increase their stamina or mood, which are essentially cookies and pop, but whatever. So I'm going to go have him mine. It really doesn't take them very long to do anything, really. At the beginning, nothing takes more than a minute. But it lets you go about what you were doing before without having to go out and gather the things yourself, which is kind of cool, but... I mean, if you prefer that hands-on feel of 
professions, I don't know that you'd really like it. At the beginning, they give you this card, and throughout various levels, you can use the card again, and it'll give you items, but, well, I, I suppose I might as well use it right now. It'll give you a book, and the reason I took it right now is because the book lets you train skills without going to a trainer. You can just open up the book. You still have to pay, but that's it. My sprite's back already. Whenever a sprite returns from doing anything you told it to do, it'll make that little doorbell noise. Alright, let's see. I need to defeat laughing crabs and smiling crabs, and I get boots and one of those cookies I was talking about for the sprite. As you can see, things die relatively easily, and I can understand that at the beginning because of the fact that you have next to no moves, but I'm playing a character I'm going to make an assassin right now, and using just a simple bow attack, I can kill things in just about one hit, maybe two. So I, did, I don't know for certain if that's just at the beginning levels, because he's only like level 22. But if it's like that throughout the whole game, then killing things is almost laughably easy. <laughs> but to be honest, I'm okay with that. I've played some games where fighting a single mob takes a good minute or two. So doing a quest to kill like 10 or 15 of them or however many, depending on if it's a gathering quest, you feel like you've been there for weeks. And no one likes that. Let's see, which ones do I need? Smiling crabs. It's the yellow ones. And done. Let's go turn this in. Might as well go ahead and put this in my sprites room, too. Gives a 50% chance to get one extra XP during collection. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but... Yep. Anything you add to your sprites room you can actually see, by the way. This guy talks to you about classes, maybe? Nah, this is about learning skills. Doesn't really matter because I have that book, but... Report to someone else. And this is one of the sodas I was talking about. It raises your sprite's mood by one level. Let's see, where do I need to go? Back to the beginning. This game isn't entirely open world in the fact that it's seamless, but it does have a very open worldy feel to it. There are gates you have to go through to get from one area to another, but it isn't just you go to a portal and then you come out somewhere else. You actually run from area to area. Which, 
I personally like having that feeling of actually being in a large world instead of just going from place to place via, like, flight or something. Defeat some longhorn deer. Let's go turn on the quest about mining practice. Now that my sprite's back. Honestly, I might as well have them go do some more things. Well, I'm... Questing. There we go. I'm gonna go get some leather. And here's some of those cards. You can either pick one to give... A bonus to physical attack by 2% or magic attack. I'm going to take the one for physical. Obviously, because I'm going to be a warrior. As far as changes in the game that I've noticed so far, there's only one server now. There used to be... Oh, I... At least two or three. I want to say there was four, but I'm not sure. The differences in questing... What the hell? Huh. Just a dude sitting here. I kind of thought he came out of the pot I broke. Um, anyway... You get a mount really early now, and before they would give you mounts through quests that you could use after you hit 20 that were... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? But they only had like a limited duration, like they would last for 24 hours or something. But now they give you one that you can upgrade as you level, and it lasts forever, which is pretty handy. After doing this quest, I should reach level 5, and then I can finally become a warrior, and I can show you some of the differences in classes. Well, in some way, anyway, I can point out things about the warrior class that you get right off the bat. I can tell you one right now, and that's that you're not going to be wearing what is essentially cloth armor. But that's kind of a given. I just wasn't hitting him. What the heck? So how is everyone today? I'm... doing okay. I think I'm starting to get a bit of a head cold or something. Two more. There we go, level 5. Might as well kill the last one, though. To collect a book. Apparently I just have to use that. Give me potions. Maybe I should put some of those in my hotbar. Like in some other games, every class uses mana. There's no differentiation between the different resources. Everyone just uses the same thing. Which I think is a little bland, but... You know. Actually, I, don't, I shouldn't turn that in. If you get to a point where you should be changing your class, you won't gain any more experience until you've done so. Which... Is a little weird, but after you finish the quest, you essentially get an entire level 
so... Let's see if my sprite can actually make anything useful. Oh god, I need way more leather. There we go. Oh, these. For anyone who was wondering. When you see one of these, you can come up to it and right-click on it and choose to bind your soul there. And then whenever you die, you'll come back to this spot. Regardless of where you die, though. So, say I bound mine to the first area I get to when I leave the starting area. Then, if I were to die anywhere else in the entire world, I would come back to that spot. Which is cool in some ways, because if you bind it to the city, whenever you die, you just go back to the city, and then you can, like, teleport from there. But, at the same time, not being able to spawn in the area you're in if you, say, forget to bind your soul to the place you're questing in is kind of lame. Path of the Fighter. Talk to him again. And it gives you the option to make one of these, which is sort of how the specking system works. I'm not entirely sure how to pull it up. There we go. You unlock slots as you level up, and you'll have cards, essentially, and you can put them in that slots, and that's how you spec your character. I'll go with Sword Specialist. Do I not have any inventory space for this? Shit. Um, I'll drop these, they're next to worthless anyway. God damn it, drop it. There we go. Alrighty, there we go, I'm a fighter now. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya!